Congressman Ron Paul, who joins us now by phone from Texas and has been warning us about all this for quite some time. Congressman, good to have you with us. Did you expect it to be this big this soon? Um, well, I'm not a bit surprised. Matter of fact, I think it's going to be bigger than 1.8. Wow. Uh, there was a time a few years ago I predicted we'd have a deficit in one year of $1 trillion, but here we are really approaching $2 trillion. It, it, does, it shocks me, but doesn't totally surprise me because uh, of, of the kind of uh, arguments in, uh, here in Washington. It's always spend, never cut, print money, borrow money. Nobody's denied anything. Fight every war in the world. Give everybody every benefit in the world. I mean, sometimes I just think they're they're delirious. You well, know? there comes there does come a time, Congressman, and you you're always worrying about this when you have to pay for it. When you can't just presume that it's all free money, that it actually does come home to roost and catches up with you. How are the folks out there? Let's not get caught in the weeds quite yet of monetary policy. How are the folks out there watching going to feel the effects of this deficit? Well, the deficit uh, will be liquidated. We know that. It, it is never paid. It has to be liquidated. And, what, and, and, and that's a good thing. Debt should be liquidated when it gets out of whack. And, and when we go through these processes, uh, the government should get out of the way and the debt should be liquidated. But, but the big debt, the big $50 trillion, you know, we do talk a lot about passing this on to the next generation, but we're past that now. Uh, we're in the presence of liquidating that debt. And that is uh, through the destruction of money. All the debt is going to be paid. Okay, let, be let paid me just by... be clear, Congressman, just so that the folks out there understand, when you talk about liquefying, it's almost like the Wizard of Oz, you know, I'm going to liquidate <laughs> her. Uh, you, you're, talking, you're just talking plain and simple about printing money, and that creates inflation to pay the bills, correct? Right. We, we can't pay the bills, and we're not productive enough to quit, sp or, or smart enough to quit spending and pay the bills off. So what we'll do is we'll literally pay, this, you know, we owe China about a trillion. Well, they're going to get paid, but they're going to get paid with money that is uh, worth a lot less. So Bernanke doubled the money supply in the past eight or nine months. No, that hasn't translated into doubling all the prices, but it will eventually maybe be a lot worse then the dollar is only worth 50 cents on the dollar. So we are liquidating debt. Our national debt, as horrible as it is, is actually going to be going down without taxation. But believe me, it's a lot worse than paying your bills and working our way out of it because runaway inflation is just horrendous. It's, it's scary. It's scary. By the way, we're looking at pictures, just so you know, uh, Congressman, of you uh, interrogate or questioning, I should say, uh, Ben Bernanke, who we're about to hear from, by the way, at the, in, in about a half hour. But let me just run a clip from that hearing. This was uh, just, a, just a couple of weeks ago uh, between you and Ben Bernanke, and then get you to comment. Go okay. ahead, run the clip. Give me an idea what you precisely would do if you faced a situation where prices were going up 10 percent with no economic growth. Well, I, th I think that's an unlikely scenario. Um, but uh, we certainly would have to take steps to ensure price stability because if inflation gets out of control, we know that has very adverse effects on the economy, both in the medium and long term, and so we would obviously have to address that. Now, that was just last week, by the way. Clearly, at that point, Congressman, he had an inkling, because these guys know before we do, what the deficit was going to be. Uh, he thinks, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he believes that before we actually create huge inflation to pay for this thing, we're going to grow our way out of it. Do you agree with him? No, it's impossible. And I argued also that same day that we already have the inflation because free market people define inflation as increasing the money supply. One of the consequences of that will be rising prices, and everybody uh, knows about it. But he, uh, he believes that he knows how to remove uh, all this excess credit when the time comes. But my point is that inevitably fiat money leads to the conditions where prices are going up, the economy slows, slows up so much that nobody will turn the, you know, the spigot off. All right, well, uh, let, me, let me stop you right there because you're throwing a lot out there. The, the Obama administration says the U.S. economy is going to expand at 3.5% annual rate by year end. And again, that he, they uh, support Bernanke's idea that we can grow our way out of this. You say that's, that's just a pipe dream. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that's going to happen. And even if you had a 3% uh, 
nominal uh, growth, what would the real growth be? What if you have a 6% inflation rate? You're still losing. So uh, you have to know what they're talking about. But we're, we're not going to grow our way out of it. I mean, just look at where we've lost 5 million jobs. Our steel plants are overseas. We don't build cars anymore. We don't save in, in a real sense. Uh, so all of a sudden to be able to grow our way out of it and with this kind of spending and taxation and burden on the people – no, it's not going to happen. We may get a little reprieve and a little bounce. Uh, that's what the stock market is saying. But, but I, I surely wouldn't be reassured by that. All right. Well, finally, uh, the central bank president, uh, we call him central bank president, the Federal Reserve chairman, Ben Bernanke, says that the central bank is, quote, prepared to reduce the assets on its balance sheet promptly as the economy recovers in order to ward off inflation. You don't believe that Ben Bernanke, by the way, who's up for reappointment as chairman, uh, I believe, in December. You don't think he has the gumption to do that? Well, you know, he said if, there, if there's growth, he'll remove it. But my point of my question was, is what if there isn't growth? And I also said that he'd be between the hark and, uh, rock and the hard place because, uh, you know, if you, if you turn off the money uh, spigot, then the economy tumbles even more. Yeah. Uh, no, he. By the he way, did you say did you say he'd be did you say he'd be between Barack and a hard place? The Rock, <laughs> <laughs> the Rock and the hard place. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I thought you. <laughs> All right. No, no, he he's going to have a tough time making that decision. And politics enter into it. You know, if you had sound money instead of uh, designing a central economic planning system through banking, which is the Federal Reserve System, uh, we'd be a lot better off. I mean, that's what we should have is sound money and free market economics. We should be saving money. Today, what if you want to save money and you get uh, less than 1% in your savings? Who's going to save? We need to spend less. Everybody said spend more. Uh, don't save money and uh, prop up prices. Keep the prices high. Don't don't lower the price of labor. Don't lower the prices of goods. Don't lower the price of houses. Build more houses. Yeah. We need a correction. Correction should be a good word. When when the government screws things up and makes things, you know, so much out of whack, we need a correction. And a correction is a healthy thing. And everything we do in Washington, everything the central bank does is they work real hard to prevent the correction. Yeah. That's why it's prolonged. Well, and, and you and I both know they won't be able to do that for long. You can only go against Mother Nature so long before it comes back to bite you. Congressman, we've got to leave it at that. Ron Paul, great to hear from you, sir. Thanks for being here. Thank you.